Reporter Tom Cushman described him as a fighter riding a left hook that whistled like the winds of winter before it exploded. A force of nature, the eye of the storm in Philadelphia was called. Eugene Hart was born G1 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Adversity struck early in his life when he contracted polio at the age of two. My mother used to carry me around for about five or six years until I could walk, Hart said. I started running and playing basketball a little later to strengthen my legs. He discovered boxing at the Police Athletic League before receiving instruction at the Champs Gym in Philadelphia. Coming under the guidance of Sam Solomon and Dave Pollock, Hart compiled an amateur record of 29-3 and three with nine knockouts. After competing at a Golden Gloves tournament in Delaware, a referee nicknamed him Cyclone, and the moniker stuck. By the age of 15, Hart was sparring with the likes of middleweight champion Emil Griffith and contenders Stanley Kitten Hayward, Gypsy Joe Harris, and Jesse Smith, among others. Hayward often took the time to give the young fighter pointers, while Hart learned a wealth of tricks from Harris and Smith. Hart found employment at a knitting mill, but turned to professional boxing at the age of 18. He became a teenage knockout sensation as he stopped the first 19 men he faced before going the distance with veteran Don Fulmer. Included among his victims was former mentor Stanley Hayward. Hart earned a reputation for having a murderous left hook, but privately had concern about his footwork and stamina stemming from his childhood battle with polio. By the summer of 1971, Hart was the hottest middleweight in Philadelphia, ascending rapidly up the world rankings. In September of 1971, he faced veteran Denny Moyer at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Hart was dominating the fight until the sixth round when both fighters tumbled through the loose ropes. Moyer landed on the press table, injuring his ankle while Hart hit his head on the concrete floor, rendering him unconscious. Hart later sued the Spectrum, winning over $50,000 in damages, but manager Sam Solomon felt that the incident caused Hart's downfall. He developed a fear of the ropes after that, Solomon said. Every time he went near them, he would back away. Hart later complained of blurred vision and headaches. In March of 1972, he took on the experienced Nate Collins. Hart appeared to be on track for another early knockout after flooring the veteran in the second round. But Collins weathered the storm and gradually forced Hart to retreat with his counterattack. As soon as that happened, trainer Adolf Taco said, it was over. Once Hart is pushed backwards, he is nothing. The loss sent Hart's mental state into a tailspin. Both he and his mother took manager Sam Solomon to court, seeking to end their contract as his mother didn't like the way the money was being divided. Following legal proceedings, Hart remained inactive for over a year. Upon his return, he had a new manager, Jim Jacobs, and a new trainer, Custom Auto. Call a mechanic to fix a car that has a bad transmission. It doesn't do any good if he works on the carburetor, D'Amato said. Here's a young man who had a deficiency, and they tried to correct it by working on his body. The trouble was not there. It was in his mind. D'Amato placed Hart on a vegetarian diet and attempted to teach him defense. The trainer wanted a soft touch for Hart's return, but promoter Herman Taylor only had tough Puerto Rican veteran Jose Gonzalez available. If Hart gets licked, D'Amato told Taylor, you'll be the man responsible for it. What do you want, a cripple? came Taylor's reply. Hart was favored to win, but was floored twice and stopped in nine rounds. D'Amato then found his required confidence builders as Hart stopped both Doc Holliday and Spider Quinney in just two rounds each. A man with a bomb has to be around to lay that bomb when the other man makes a mistake, D'Amato said when asked about Hart's performances. But Hart then suffered a three-fight losing streak, getting his ears boxed off by Willie the Worm Monroe before being stopped by both Bobby Watts and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Monroe, a former sparring partner, knew he had Hart's number. To him, every day was like a real fight, Monroe said, but he couldn't handle me. He'd come lunging like he does, but I wouldn't let him do nothing. Sometimes he'd swing so hard, he'd fall down. Hart parted ways with Customato. He returned to his original trainer, Sam Solomon, but retained Jim Jacobs as a co-manager. I tried it Cuss's way, Hart said. Now I'm going to try it my way. Hart knocked out three straight opponents before soundly defeating Sugar Ray Seals over 10 rounds. In November of 1975, he took on Benny Briscoe in a dramatic, wall-busting brawl. The 
tensions building All around you can feel it in the air It's more than a feeling A new reality everywhere I look and see the signs of the times Yeah, it's coming, but they're all in the now Everything you know, it's all about the change See the sky crack and it rains down flames Oh man, they ain't ready for it This is something that they can't ignore Coming down like a meteor This is more than a game You better get ready Shock the world Shock the world Shock the world This is more than a game You better get ready Go ahead, get ready Shock the world Shock the world The bout ended in a draw with both fighters receiving raves from the press and fans alike. Cyclone's got the good left hook, Briscoe said. He gets planted on the ropes, gets that left hook set, and he can knock Jerusalem down. But five months later, Hart's career took another U-turn. Benny Briscoe stopped him in only one round in a rematch. Five months later, Hart faced future middleweight champion Marvelous Marvin Hagler. At the end of the sixth round, Hart landed a huge left hook on Hagler just as the bell sounded. Hart stepped back and waited for Hagler to fall. Instead, the future legend spit at him. At the end of the eighth round, Solomon exhorted Hart to get off his stool. Go ahead, Solomon commanded. You fight him, came Hart's reply. This guy is an animal. After these losses, Hart once again split from trainer Sam Solomon. There were a lot of things I went through with Sam that I don't want to talk about, Hart said, except that I like to point out that it ain't always the fighter who does wrong. I thought me and Sam would be able to sit down and better ourselves the second time around, but it turned out to be more of the same. Hart then returned to cuss D'Amato. He once debunked D'Amato's teachings, but now saw the efficacy in them, stating that he had grown lonely in the Catskill Mountains. You don't talk to cuss, you just listen, Hart said. And a wise man seems strange to a fool. D'Amato once again focused on Hart's mental state. He was convinced that the fighter's early battle with polio instilled a belief that he was incapable of performing well in extended bouts. I've said all along that it is a myth, D'Amato said, that once his mind accepts what his body is capable of, he will be great. Hart began running up to 15 miles a day, believing that he had solved this stamina problem. After four months of training with Customato, Hart stepped in to face the rugged Vito Antifermo. Ready now for round one between Vito Antifermo of Barry, Italy, Brooklyn and Cormac, Long Island in the green trunks with the red stripe and Eugene Cyclone Hart of Philadelphia with the black trunks with the white stripe. Now Hart is a farmer with a terrific He has won 35 out of 39 and scored 28 knockouts. Andrew Fermo has had 41 fights, winning 37, losing three with one draw. He's got 16 knockouts. 
Dustin here has, has hard pitch of courage if he doesn't score a knockout punch early. Jake Lamata and Rocky Graziano with that. between Vito Adefermo, 159 pounds of Comac, Long Island, by way of Barry Italy, and Eugene Cyclone Hart of Philadelphia, 158 pounds. Adefermo was cut over the right eye in the first round, and I think Hart landed that left hook right on it. Hart digging to the body with the left hand. Adefermo is a tough customer, though. He starts very slowly. Hard as a rule, it starts very fast and slows down. The referee Hank Sisko getting them apart. Hard is not a headhunter tonight. He's smartly throwing that left hook to the body. Antifermo, the shorter of the two, has to get in close for his punches. Fermo has a problem. He is prone to being cut around the eyes. He's already been cut. And yet, in order to score, he has to get in close, which puts him in jeopardy of being cut again. Hart can fight at long range, which is his fourth. And to Fermo's eyes have been well plastered with an anointment between rounds. Fermo takes a punch well. Just a little trickle of blood now. A vicious body punch by Hart. And that made it to Fermo hold on. It's been all right from Hart so far. Ten-round bout. Vito Antifermo, Barry Italy in the green trunk. The scoring in uh, Philadelphia is on the five-point must system, as you see, and it's uh, four points or less to the loser, and each man gets five in the even round. Hart is banging away with that left hand again. trickle of blood from the right eye of Vito Antifermo, right beside it. That's nothing new for Vito, he's used to being cut. The big question now is, Hart is winning the fight, but can he maintain this current pace? Because Antifermo will be throwing them as long as he can stand. Two minutes left in the round. He oh, scored some big ones too. Antifermo is bothering Hart by crowding him against the rope, and Cyclone doesn't like it. Hart likes to fight at long range. Antifermo likes to be in close. There's a lot of blood around the right ear, around the right ear of Antifermo now. 
scheduled 10 round bout between Rico Antifermo and the green trunk. Eugene Cyclone Hart of Philadelphia in the black. Hart has had Antifermo in trouble. so far by the judges and the referee. One round apiece and one round even. Personally, I would have given two rounds to Hart. My opinion is unofficial. Oh, 
Tomato kept yelling the numbers 753, but Hart ignored the instructions. 7 was a jab, 5 a left hook to the body, and 3 a left uppercut. He didn't follow the numbers, Tomato said, and you saw what happened. In the dressing room after the fight, famed trainer Teddy Atlas recalled that only a thin drape hung between the Hart and Antofermo camps. Hart overheard Antofermo say, quote, Every time he hit me with that left hook to the body, I was sure I was going to quit. After the second round, I thought if he hit me there again, I'd quit. I thought the same thing after the fourth round, then he didn't hit me no more. Hart then began weeping. It was really soft at first, Atlas said, then harder. He was crying because for the first time he understood that Vito felt the same way he had and worse. The only thing that separated the guy talking from the guy crying was what they did. The coward and the hero feel the same emotions. They're both human. After the fight, Hart retired, attributing the decision to personal neglect. He started a family and secured a job in the sanitation department of Philadelphia. However, the passion for boxing persisted. By 1982, five years after his last bout, he resolved to make a comeback. He once again called on old trainer Sam Solomon to guide him, but the third time wasn't a charm as Hart was knocked out in four one-sided rounds by Tony Suero. Solomon promised the fighter would be back in six weeks. He was just a little rusty, that's all, Solomon said. But Hart retired for good, redirecting his focus toward his family and his job. Three decades later, he found himself back in the ring, training his son Jesse, who went on to become a highly ranked super middleweight. In 2003, Hart was named to the Ring Magazine's list of the 100 greatest punchers of all time. His presence still lingers in Philadelphia, etched into the collective memory of those who crowded into the spectrum during its glory years in the 1970s. A living legend with a wicked left hook.